What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics and today it is time for a leg workout. And before a leg workout, we like to take our pre-workout. So we have a couple of pre-workouts that I can take. This is one of them, but this is a special one because it is, you know, dosed appropriately. The unfinished pre-workout by Jack Factory. It's not actually unfinished because it's the finished one, but that's the brand name because we are never truly finished with our craft. That's really what it means. But as you can see, for example, one scoop it says is 30 grams, which is a whole lot. So there's already uh, six grams of adult citrine, for example, 3.2 grams of beta alanine, and all of these ingredients are highly dosed compared to a lot of other pre-workouts which only have eight gram scoops, which can be impossible to dose scientifically correct. But the pre-workout is one part of the supplementation around the workout. Another part is our intra workout so in our intra workout we put a lot of stuff one of the most important things it's not a supplement at all it's actually pomegranate juice so this i put in 150 mils in one two shaker cup so i drink like almost three liters two and a half liters every single workout and what is in here is 14 grams of carbs per 100 ml so i'm having about 42 grams of carbs from this alone not just for the carbs but also for the health benefits and nitric oxide production within the blood very helpful but also something a lot of people don't know or do you can also get l carnitine supplements by jack factory or other brands but most brands have for example this capsule in a solid form so a pressed form so normally this is just powder and this powder is actually present within the capsule now because l citrine i mean l carnitine is best absorbed while contracting a muscle so contractile tissues while being performed they absorb l carnitine better just like creatine for example but you put this into your intra workout shake just like this there's just uh, powder in here you put it in here just like that and then you add 750 mils, I mean milligrams of this stuff into your intra workout and then you just have the capsule left over, you throw that away, but that's the perfect way to actually accurately dose the amount of this supplement L-carnitine within your intra workout. And to me that is just a very convenient way, because there's a lot of capsules in here, I believe 100 and 120 capsules, so I put two in there every single workout, so 60 workouts you can last with that supplement. And the other stuff we put in is for example um, EAA search for the EAA of course, but also Hydra search for the added potassium, sodium, Himalayan pink salt, coconut oil, I mean that oil powder, which is all in here. So adding all of that in the shake will provide you with the nutrients needed to make the workout not twice as good, but maybe 5% better. But guess what? Over time, that couple of percent will make a very big difference in the future. So that's why I do it every single workout up until maybe like the last two weeks of a contest prep where you have to drop all the calories to really get into this deep level of conditioning, which I will be getting into this contest prep, which will be starting in like one week from recording this video. So very excited, but for now, let's go downstairs because we are in the gym office at the moment to train some legs. All right, guys, we are downstairs and actually in the storage room of the gym, which is being converted into also a room where you can do some exercises. So here we have the booty builder, which is a very important addition for me because I need to work on the glutes and in order to isolate the glutes, a hip thrust for me is no option because the bar presses so hard against my hip, it sends like a shooting pain through the nerve. It's no matter how I try it, even with padding, it doesn't work. So this one, however, really feels very good. You don't need to use a lot of weight in order to target the glutes. And trust me, I don't know if you know the feeling, but when you train your abs for like three to four sets, and if you really go to failure there, the feeling in your abs is like a an, an, an weird, empty, yet 
nauseating sensation and that sensation is then placed into my glutes it sounds strange but then i know i'm truly targeting them so let's get started here on a warm-up so only five kilos on each side and only use the glutes to drive yourself all the way up No need to do as many reps here because as I said in other videos as well it's not just a warm-up for the muscles but more to get to the groove of the movement and to get used to heavier weight so that the working set weight doesn't come as a surprise to your nervous system and your musculature and that's why warm-ups are important. working set time let's go to the max and at a moment that i can't straighten my upper leg anymore parallel to the floor is when you reach failure because then the glutes aren't capable of keeping the legs well, in pushing the weight all the way up so let's do this feeling I was talking about before it's like you don't feel it until the last two reps when you feel that the energy within the muscle is starting to disappear and you, you try to contract even harder but it's no use and when that's the case then you reach muscular failure and uh, that's the best way so for example when doing back squats you might reach failure not because of the muscles but because of your stamina, your breath, your lower back even, but not to the isolation of the legs. And here, you truly isolate the glutes. All right, second warm set time. And with this movement, with actually, well, with isolations like this, that are a little more specialized, I don't like to do too complicated things with different rep ranges. This rep range in between 10, 12, 12 plus feels very good for me. If I reach at least 10 plus or 10 reps, I'm good. If we go below that, I mean, it's an isolation movement. I really don't like it because with this one, instead of then isolating the glutes, you might actually target the quads a bit more if you don't look out. So if you want to target the glutes and they are a weak point, stick to a higher rep range because otherwise all our muscles will simply, they've already been trained to take over because your glutes are weak for a reason, because they always are being taken over by other muscles. So same rep range, same weight, let's go. That's it, nice first movement, and now it's time for the next one. All right guys, second movement is going to be the unilateral leg curl, laying down. Usually, um, so if you don't see it leg curl, I do a laying one, either with both legs or with one leg at the same time, making it two very different movements. And the benefit here is, as I always say, with unilateral movements, you can start with the weak side first and then the strong one.
Nice, that's actually two more reps than the previous one. And uh, you know, the weight is 10% less. No, more, yeah, less. So the reps should be 10% more, which uh, I definitely achieved. But now we're done with this one. Feel a very good pump in the, uh, in the hamstrings. And now it's time for the first compound movement. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm putting the um, ATX wedge platforms on there. So one on each side, because if you put them in the middle, this will not be able to go down. So I'm gonna put another one there. And instead of weightlifting shoes, I'm gonna use those platforms, because I think it provides a bit more stability and it feels a bit more natural to do so. The stand should be a little, well, a little wider than shoulder width if you want to target the glutes a bit more. Because, in my opinion, uh, if you look at the anatomy, very close stance targets the, the quads a bit more. A little wider allows you to drive a bit more with the glutes. So, that's what I'm going to do. And first, warm up. So, this platform also allows you to go a bit deeper. You need less ankle flexibility in order to achieve a deeper range of motion, which causes more knee flexion, more stretch in the glutes. So overall, if you want bigger legs, simply increase the range of motion. Don't care about the weight at the moment because a full range of motion decreases the amount of weight you can use, but still go as heavy as you possibly can with the correct form. Okay, I'm wearing knee sleeves right now. Knee sleeves actually cause more fabric to be here, causing less tension on the knee joint, which allows you to do the exercise without knee pain. So I'm preventing the pain from ever getting there by wearing knee sleeves. No need to waste energy on more reps, guys. I usually train with warm-ups of 10 reps every time until I reach the working weight, but you literally take away glycogen energy from the working set, which is the only set that grows muscle. So uh, try to only warm up the necessary amount of reps, and in the working set, you give it your all. Okay, this is going to be a very challenging set I know already normally I'm around this weight depending on the stance width how, how far forward how far back you stand the weight you're able to handle is different so normally I'm actually a bit more to the front allowing for more weight but you also want some decent knee flexion which means quad growth whatever is agreeing with your anatomy is what you should do always go all the way down and well, all the way up of course, but without taking too much of a break at the very top, unless it's a very few last reps to get a few more extra out. So uh, let's see how this goes. This uh, was the third worrying set, so the ending set of this exercise. And in the peak off season, which would be, well, right now I'm in the peak, but right now I'm also in a maintenance mode. So maintenance means try to recover from everything you've done in the off season as well. So normally what you could have done is another set or an intensifier, for example, a rest pause set, even a drop set, but those will cause more fatigue versus the stimulus they cause. So you don't want to do that, but you actually want to recover from everything. 
and be entirely fresh to shot the prep. Anyway, let's rest and uh, do the next movement. Leg press time, guys. So FTV belt squat. We're going to do another compound in the leg press. And uh, here we also have to maximize the range of motion, which why I'm wearing now weightlifting shoes to elevate the heel again, to go down as deep as possible, maximizing knee flexion without the heel coming off the platform. So let's warm up and then pretty soon go to the working weight. and full range of motion again. I'm going as low as I can without impinging the lower back. You don't want the lower back to come off of the, uh, the seat right here. And we're gonna go, as I mentioned, all the way down until we can't go through a full range of motion anymore. Or when the lower back is starting to be messed up, but uh, let's not hope that happens. Very good. Not a lot of reps, but you can feel the lactic acid burn in, uh, in the quads and also the inner thighs, which is what you, what you want here. I'm gonna do reduce the weight with 20 and do another working set. Time to finish off the legs with some leg extensions. So, we're going to do an isolation movement to finish off the legs. Just like doing a cable pullover for the back to isolate the lats. After a back workout, we're going to do the same principle for the legs. First having done all the movements. Now the legs are really warmed up. Almost finished, but not entirely finished because the leg extension, because the contraction at the top is unmatched by no matter which other exercise you're trying to do, not even a squat, a bell squat, a leg press, a head squat today, none of them have the tension at the stretched leg because when you stretch your legs on those movements, you have a rest, it's literally on the joints. But here, the exact opposite happens, which is why it's such a big beneficial thing to do to really target the inner quads, which you almost can't see, but here, this line, you really contract hard here if you do this movement. So let's warm up first with one uh, warm up and then a few working sets. Remember guys, with a leg extension, go all the way up. If you can't go all the way up anymore, in my opinion, those few reps, you can do some partials, but if you, you know, um, make them seem like they're full reps, they are not because the most benefit is at the very top. Let's go. Final movement we're going to do with some calves and then we are finished. One leg workout I end with the calves like today and the other workout I start with the calves because I want them to be a very strong point. They've already always been a strong point for me but it will be a shame to neglect them now. I did over the like the last one and a half years, two years. I didn't really pay much attention to them but uh, that's changing. The last two months or so I've been really hammering them and the results are starting to show 
So uh, let's do this one. Three full working sets, but first one warm up. the weight and go to failure. Very important here guys, focus on the stretch of going all the way down and all the way up. Not a lot of volume, the lactic acid is still burning a lot, and that's what you want to feel if you train the calves. workout I uh, hope you enjoyed this one and uh, after legs it's also very important to have a post workout meal which you want to eat right now all right there was a nice leg workout after training the legs it is very important of course to have a nice post workout meal which I'll show you right now so here it is we have 180 grams of cream of rice in here is a whole banana some calabout chocolate but also some caramelized chocolate adding them to the post workout is simply chocolate and a little bit more sugar compared to the calabout chocolate so they will only you know guide my glycogen stores to become even more full so that was the video guys only one more week of this maintenance phase I will also be doing a blood test, which I'll share with you, obviously, because health in bodybuilding is very important. Thank you a whole lot for watching, and don't forget to stay golden.